Hello YouTube, I've got another uh, PC build for you guys here. It's been a while since my last one, a few years, but today I will, I will be building an Unraid server. Um, obviously, not a whole lot to it because it's just a server. I don't have, you know, a fancy graphics card or anything for this. In fact, I don't actually have a case yet because cases are apparently hard to get. But, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and pretty much dive right into what I'm doing here. So, um, currently in my basement I have an old Dell R410 just for running. And uh, it's, it's a little on the older side. It's from 2010. And I'm really hoping to replace that sucker. So... Um, kind of just for local, you know, virtual machines for like running game servers, you know, maybe like a local DNS server, whatever, cool stuff like that is what I'm going for here. Um, and also the reason why I'm building this is also that my, my buddy needs a offsite backup for a whole bunch of his data. And I figured why not build myself like a pretty cool self-hosted NAS with tons of storage for that while also um, utilizing some of that storage for my own for my own purposes. So it's kind of a dual purpose thing. Like, like, most think of it like a game server slash, um, you know, cold storage build. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. I spent about 500 bucks on these parts here. Again, no case. Uh, it's probably gonna total it to be around 700 overall. Um, but from what you're seeing here, it's 500 bucks. I did not buy this stuff though. This is uh, pre-existing, but um, you know, I, I got myself an Intel Core i5-11400, pretty good uh, budget i5. Intel's definitely doing a good job of making those better and better every year, so um, excited for that. I got 32 gigs of Rip Jaws 5, 3200 MHz RAM, that's 2 times 16 gigs. Um, Asus Prime B560M-A motherboard, it's a micro ATX, nice and compact, I really wanted something that wasn't massively big and bulky. Uh, pretty much went with the simplest motherboard there is. It's got four RAM slots, a couple of M.2 slots, uh, six SATA slots, which will be important later when I get more hard drives. I decided to not cheap out on a power supply. I got a 550 watt EVGA uh, 80 plus gold power supply here. This was about 60 or $70, um, but I've cheaped out on power supplies for, before and I've regretted it. I just said I definitely wanted something that was 80 plus gold for the added efficiency. Right, because this guy's gonna be running 24/7. I don't want to waste wattage on um, on literally just resistance from it being low efficiency. So I got a high efficiency one, and I I figured why not get full modular, and why not get one that's not uh, a, a cheapskate number of watts. So it's a pretty decent efficiency, 550 watt modular power supply for the server build here, which will give you plenty of upwards mobility. Maybe someday for whatever silly reason. I'll decide that I want to turn this into a gaming rig or something, put a graphics card in it, and so that'll uh, definitely support the CPU and a graphics card. So over here, these parts, um, these are two one terabyte hard disks that I've had for like years and years. Um, I am not utilizing these long term. These are just a test case to make sure that I can put Unraid on this and have it do what I want to. Um, my, my buddy's going to buy the hard drives for this because it's really going to be for his cold storage that we have those hard drives. So he's probably going to buy four 14 terabyte external hard drives and we're going to shuck them uh, and then put you know those four 14 terabytes in here. But just for now, I just have two one terabyte hard disks just to do a proof of concept. Um, part of that proof of concept is ensuring that the drives don't spin all the time because that's going to be cold storage. There's really no reason to have the drive spinning 24-7, eating up uh, all those precious watts uh, for no good reason. Especially here in Massachusetts, the cost of electricity is like, you know, 25 cents a kilowatt hour. So um, the, the, the cost does add up. I've got this little NVMe SSD. This actually was originally my Dell G3 I bought about two and a half years ago. Um, I was planning on buying two half terabyte Western Digital NVMe's. But I figured I could get myself started with one 128 gig. It won't have any parity data to it, so if it breaks, I'm SOL. But it's not really a big deal when I'm still kind of just figuring it out. Um, but I will eventually replace this probably with two, again, half terabyte NVMEs. But right now, 128 gigs is fine uh, for what I need. I've got a little USB with the Unraid installer on it. I'm just going to try it out in trial mode and make sure it works for me, basically. I've tried it out a little bit before, but I really want to make sure that it, it, uh, it fits my needs. So like I said, I don't have a case, which I'm super bummed about. I was looking at the um, Cooler Master N400, which is kind of on the older side, or the Fractal Node 804, which is kind of a cute case. It looks pretty cool. It can fit tons of hard drives. But those both are technically available right now, but the prices are disgustingly bloated. 
the uh, the fractal noted 804 is 125 dollars on Amazon right now when it used to be I think like 70 or 80. So I just can't stomach um, you know overpaying that much for components. So uh, pretty much just gonna build this thing together as a proof of concept. Uh, not on the carpet, of course. Don't worry. But I'll put that together basically without a case. Make sure everything works. Um, and basically figure the case situation later. So I'll go ahead and go into a short little time lapse. There's not tons of components, there's not tons of cable management to do, so it should be on the more brief end of things. Um, but I'll do that and I'll basically then just go over getting the thing set up. So I'm pretty much all set. Uh, a few notes though, you might have noticed me in the video. I took the M.2 heat shield off, went to put it in my M.2 SSD. Uh, ends up it's not big enough. This guy is too short so, so that there's no mounting holes for the M.2 slots. It ends like right here. Um, and rather just leave it in there dangling, I left this adapter in there because I put this guy in a desktop for a while. Um, so I'll have this adapter. So I'm, I'm just going to leave this SSD in this PCI Express adapter, it'll be logically the same as far as any OS is concerned, so um, that'll work. I have to say I'm really not a fan of Intel's mounting system here. They've been using this since at least 2009 when I started building computers. Um, it's this little pin system, you just plastic pin you just push through. It's always confusing which way you're supposed to twist these guys in. Um, ends up the air was not supposed to be pointing to the inside when you want it locked. When you do twist it inside, you're not locking, you're actually unlocking it. So I had to finagle with that a little bit. Um, ends up the way they give it to you, you just slap it on, you push the pin straight down, they, they, they snap into place. Um, they are sticking out from the back side of the motherboard a little bit, which is why having it on the surface directly makes me nervous a little bit, because I don't want to put, put tension and push these out. Um, I'm always concerned about that, they don't really lock in super, super firmly, but um, there's no there's no wiggle there. I think we're good. Check to make sure that the the RAM does indeed go in this configuration in the second and fourth slot. I think we're pretty much set. I'm leaving my unraid bootable disk out for now. I'm just going to go ahead and switch the power supply on. Um, and the way I'm going to power it on, I, I I took the the two wires to the power switch. I just took this Raspberry Pi cable I had lying around. The power on. All you need to do is just touch these two together to establish momentary continuity. And we should be good. Um, I don't see any power LEDs on on the motherboard, indicating it has power, but I'm not too worried about it. Let's see what happens. This is really hard to do with one hand. There we go. Got it. Uh, I am, however, not getting any video. So that's a little weird. So after a little bit of troubleshooting, I'm pulling the components out. Um, I grabbed this GTX 1060 that I had. In my uh, in a spare PC, uh, PC originally built in 2012. I'm lucky enough to say they have a spare graphics card in these uh, in these days. But um, it seems like for some reason the display port on board the motherboard wasn't putting out any video. Uh, not sure why. I have the i5 11400. So it has Intel HD graphics. It should do that just fine. Not sure why it wasn't. But I with this graphics card, sure enough, it's working fine. Um, I just put XMP on, which it seems to have ignored. I'm not really sure. It's telling me it's 2133 here, but it's telling me it's 3200 down here, so I'll have to go ahead and, uh... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, it's running at full speed. I have to plug in the other the other stick of RAM. I'll plug in the other drives again, and uh, we'll make sure that we're doing pretty good. I'll go ahead and get um, Unraid loaded, and it looks like the CPU temperature is hovering at 32, which is pretty... 34 now, which is pretty, pretty baller. That's definitely pretty, pretty good, so I'm happy with that. So, keep on chugging. Okay, so it's a few days later. Uh, a few things. First off, I got in two 500 gigabyte Western Digital SSDs. Um, 
They're pretty fast guys, but they were only 43 bucks a piece, but I'll mention that in a moment. So where I left off, I was going to install Unraid, which I did. I installed it to a USB, um, but long story short, I had nothing but problems. It was pretty terrible. It booted for a little while, I was experimenting with it, all of a sudden stopped booting, just gave me a black screen. Figured, okay, maybe my USB died. Put it on a new USB, got it booting for just long enough to have constant VM crashes from an obscure error message I couldn't figure out the solution to. Uh, before I could finish troubleshooting that, the other USB stopped booting for no reason. It would just post and give me a black screen. So I'm done with Unraid. I've had nothing but problems with it. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who are using it um, wonderfully without issues. But personally for me, I just wasn't comfortable with it. So I'm instead using Proxmox. Um, obviously there's a little bit more to it than that. You can see I'm running it right here. Um, so that's pretty happy. i got a couple of VMs running. Game servers are going just beautifully. Uh, it idles at... You can't really see that, but a whopping... Like right now it's at 77 watts for some reason. Oh, it's doing a backup. Um, but with no VMs running, this guy idles at 30 watts usage. With two VMs running and the, the Minecraft server going, it idles at about 40 watts. So that's pretty damn good, considering the fact that the server downstairs idles at like 110 to 150. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and plug in these two SSDs and get rid of this guy here. Um, and reinstall Proxmox. I don't imagine it's really that easily possible to transfer an installation to um, to a new basically software RAID 1 between these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall Proxmox, install it on a software RAID 1 between these guys. Um, I also have a ZFS effectively RAID 1 between these two disks. I've configured it, doing some research in Proxmox to make these spin down after 10 minutes so that uh, these won't just be spinning all the time, because eventually these will be replaced by my buddy's giant hard disks for his basically cold storage. So, um, yeah, basically, long story short, I'm having a lot more luck with Proxmox. I'm a lot happier. I'm going to go ahead and install these guys now and uh, get going again. And I forgot to mention, I am backing up the VMs I created to uh, that ZFS share of those two terabyte hard disk disks I just showed you. I'm sorry, my, my chair is really noisy. Um, but those are backing up right now. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall Proxmox and then restore those from the backup so I don't lose my progress so far. Okay, so I just got my computer case in. I uh, arrived a day early. I ended up buying the Cooler Master. I think I mentioned it earlier. Um, it's nice in that it's a simple design and it's got plenty of room for hard drive base. Uh, I call this a I call this an expensive cheap case because it's supposed to be cheap, but it's 2021, so it was expensive. It should have been 50 or 60 dollars, but it ended up costing me 85. And you know, just watching uh, the the prices and how they rather weren't moving and the low inventory I just basically bit the bullet and said screw it I just gotta gotta pay the extra money um, you know I bought it on Cyber Monday just a couple days ago or did I? Ah, I don't remember <laughs> so it's more between Black Friday and Cyber Monday and yeah the prices just were not going down stock was low so I figured screw it I'll buy a $50 computer case for $85 if I have to um, part of me wishes I got the uh, the other one in the kind of QB case, but this one seems like it'll work just fine for me. It's an old model, but it seems like it's got a pretty modern design. Power supply down here, you know, it's got the vents up here. Thankfully, it does have a, a filter for that. I've had cases where it, it's just open up here, and I really don't like that. Plenty of space for hard drive bays. I think it's officially listed as fitting seven 3.5 inches, and then I could get a couple adapters up here for a total of nine. Um, pretty straightforward, no, no BS design, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this thing together.
cool. So this fan here is spinning pretty slow, but that's perfectly fine with me. Um, there's also a fan up front here, right in front of these hard disks, which is also spinning, and it's putting out some 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 uh, motion, which is good. Um, but I can probably turn those down a little bit because this thing's going to generate so little heat uh, that there's really no need for that. So, um, yeah, cool. Okay, so it's a week or so later. Everything's running pretty good. I got the server kind of just nestled in here. It's nice and quiet. Doesn't doesn't bother me much. Um, I got a Windows Server 2016 VM here that I'm already peed into. It's running Minecraft. My wife is playing on it as we speak, and sure enough, it's idling pretty happily. Uh, I've got plenty of RAM, plenty of CPU. Everything's happy. Um, we can see my resources are idling pretty low. Uh, you know, around 2.5 to 4% CPU usage, which really isn't isn't too bad. I'm not sure where Proxmox is getting this figure. That's telling me that I'm using 25 gigs of RAM. I uh, I don't know what to say about that. I, I'm not, but hey, whatever. Um, so like I said, I got the Server 2016 VM. I also have a, a Pi Hole VM, which is also not using 90% of its RAM, but that's okay. Um, that was pretty cool. So overall, I'm pretty happy for sure. Uh, I got, you know, these two drive pools here, one of which is the RAID 1 of the NVMe drives. I did need to reinstall Proxmox to get it on here. I wasn't even going to try moving an installation onto a different set of drives. Um, and when I reinstalled it, the, the, ter the one terabyte hard disks, basically in ZFS RAID 1, um, were not automatically recognized as a ZFS pool. So I needed to go ahead and basically uh, rebuild that from scratch. There's probably a way that you can import ZFS pools in Linux in the command line. I need to know what that is. Um, if and when my buddy gets those big hard drives to me, I'm really going to want to know what I'm doing so that, you know, if Proxmox does have a glitch and needs reinstalling or something like that, you know, I don't lose that ZFS data, basically. So um, that's really only the outstanding item. If I go in here and I run this command for you, we can see that... Uh, the two hard disks in the in the in the one terabyte ZFS pool are indeed standing by, so they're not spinning right now. They're not using up wattage. Um, that's good because I'll probably be using those hard drives for probably on average an hour a month. Uh, so I'm really not worried about um, having those spin down most of the time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, I'm happy. I think uh, it's a pretty neat thing. I'm excited to run some more game servers, spin some more VMs up. Um, and get some real data chugging on this thing. So, as always, thank you for watching, and you know, feel free to post a comment if you have any feedback, questions, any good stuff, or even subscribe or like if you'd like to do that as well. So, see ya.